And welcome back to News On. I'm Miranda Khan. As we mentioned earlier, nearly 2 million Americans now turning down work and a child tax credit expected to hit bank accounts as soon as today. Again, we are going to continue to monitor the situation at the White House. The president expected to deliver a live press briefing about that any moment from now. Joining us live now to weigh in on this, though, in the meantime, on this issue and so much more, is CEO and founder of the Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo and former Obama campaign director, Robin Biro. Good to see you both. You too, Miranda. Good morning. So a lot of people uh, now, Robin, pointing the finger at the Biden administration, describing it as, frankly, the main culprit for people not wanting to go back to work. Uh, in your opinion, is that the case? Is it partly to blame, at least? You know, I really don't know anybody in their right mind who would turn down work and live on and choose to live on a three hundred dollar a week benefit. But it's happening uh, because it's subsidizing, in some case, state benefits. So that would amount to an amount of about seven, a little more than seventeen dollars an hour if you combine the federal amount and your state benefits. So, yes, it is partially to blame. President Biden himself said you've got to get back to work, but the money's got to run out. I'm glad that the benefit went down from 600 a month to 300, but we're, we should be nearing the time to run out on that. People got to get back to work, Miranda. Well, nonetheless, we're talking about this tax credit, um, which, you know, we were talking about it earlier with, with Terry there. We're talking about thousands upon thousands of dollars uh, that will now be going to people, not really part of the IRS tax refund. Uh, some are questioning, like, how are we going to pay for all this, especially when you have a president who's on the path to pass a $3.5 trillion reconciliation package without any bipartisan support. And one Republicans and even a few Democrats, such as Joe Manchin, wonder how we're going to pay for it without harming businesses who are already struggling to coax people back to work. Robin? That question has been asked directly of President Biden. His response has been consistently that we'll pay for this by the rush, the flush of new jobs that we will get as a result of investing this money into the economy, uh, as a result of hopefully this infrastructure bill passes and we get more of those people to work. So, you know, if you invest, the investment should pay off in theory. Uh, I'm not an economist. I just hope that this works and I hope that they know what they're doing. Uh, Melissa, do they know what they're doing? Is this a uh, sound investment in your opinion? Well, first things first, I think both parties are long past the point of wondering how we're ever going to get out of debt. We are really in huge debt in this country and neither party seems to be worried about that because we continue to spend money. There was a reason that we spent money in 2020 because of COVID, but the reason we're continuing to spend money now, I think is a transition to where Democrats are pulling us into what is really considered a welfare state. Think about it. Now we're gonna pay people under certain income for, for having children. Also now we're paying people these extended unemployment benefits and Robin's saying it's gonna make create new jobs with this new infrastructure plan. Guess what? There's plenty of jobs available now and people are not taking them. Like you said earlier, people are choosing not to work. If they're receiving approximately $1,200 a month from the federal aid and say they get, and I'm just wrapping it out here, say they get about $1,200 a month from a state, that's approximately 30 grand a year. There's a lot of people that make in that ballpark of 30 grand a year that are choosing not to work. And remember, this is pre-tax. And I think people aren't realizing when they go to file the return for 2020, if they file an extension or even 2021, people don't understand that they are going to pay taxes on that money because really it was pre-tax. They didn't pay money on that. So say they go back to work and they work five months out of the year, they're going to end up owing because they receive that money cash in net. Do you understand? Yes, we do. And I'm sure our viewers do now, Melissa. So, um, what impact, you know, I have to ask you this, Robin, what impact could this have on the midterms? Because right now, the National Republican Congressional Committee has raised, reportedly raised, more money in the first half of 2021 than any time in its history. Could this spell trouble for Democrats? Yes, because Republicans are masters at messaging. And my party, bless its heart, is not. We are always behind the curve when it comes to messaging. And Republicans, Melissa just brought up very fairly 
basically the national deficit. If you go to usdebtclock.org, you can see that it's $28 trillion and counting. And that's increased under, uh, under both Democrat and Republican administrations. Uh, and it's a huge issue. I'm raising two children. Their per share of the national deficit is gonna be something like $220,000 each that we're passing down to our children. If Republicans can use that messaging and, and try to pin it on Democrats, it's been bipartisan, but Democrats have got to do better on messaging because it's bad, just what Melissa said, for both parties. But when my party is so bad at messaging and Republicans are on it, it spells trouble for the midterms, especially when it comes to fundraising. I just want to say one thing real quick, that four states' attorneys generals are suing right now, win red, uh, because of their recurring donations. So look, it's working for Republicans, but you got to be careful when it comes to those recurring donations. Melissa. I think you're going to see uh, former President Donald Trump out there trying to campaign and doing more rallies running up into 2022. Whether or not he's going to run himself in 2024, I don't know, but he's going to help the people that he wants to see win back in congressional seats back for the Republicans in 2022. As far as what they're going to run on the issues, then one of the number one issues is going to be inflation. Costs have gone up for products, goods, and services, and you're going to see Republicans talk about that. And if they don't, they should be talking about that, because I think that is one of the number one issues. They are. They're already running ads. In fact, uh, Twitter now apologizing for taking an ad from one of the Republicans who posted the cost increases, just simply showing a, a mother, uh, you know, trying to take care of her two children and showing the cost going up for everything. And Robin, you yourself had admitted on this very program, we talked about lumber. I think you even corrected me. I think I talked about it going up, doubling in price. And you said, no, wait, wait, it's actually tripled. It's tripled. Uh, I, I know. Yeah. Uh, but, right. It doesn't, you don't have to be an economist. I mean, the people that are watching this show, we, they go, they pump their own gas. They see the prices going up. They go to the grocery store. You yourself, you're a dad. I'm sure you know how expensive kids can be. And you notice oh God, that yes. things are going up. Uh, so how do Democrats like yourself, do a better job of messaging this issue because it is a big issue, especially when I hear Democrats, not just, you know, uh, commentators like yourself come on this program, but just Democrats that I know, friends of mine, family members of mine saying, yeah, I've always been a Democrat, but yeah, I'm paying a lot more and I'm not too happy about it. We need to be having serious discussions about the global supply chain, that no one singular person is affecting the, the cost of goods from the global supply chain. That wouldn't be President Biden. It wouldn't have been President Trump it had he won re-election. So we can say that and be honest. And I've been on panels where Republicans across the aisle say, he's right, what he's saying is true about the global supply chain. We, we don't have a lot of control over the cost of goods, but we can say on messaging that we're getting shots in arms, we're, we're addressing some of the serious issues, we're trying to take on climate change, some of the things that we've been ignoring for, for some time. Uh, we've got to just get better at messaging and start, start, start touting the Democratic wins as wins, say, look, we did pass this Rescue and Recovery Act, you did get checks, the economy is starting to move again, uh, it, the stock market's doing pretty good. Melissa can speak better to that than I can. But, you know, we've got to start uh, bragging, basically, about some of the wins, because we're just not. As Democrats, we're not. We're too stuck on still talking about what former President Trump did, rather than uh, appreciating and, and talking about our own successes as Democrats. But with all due respect, and we're coming up on a commercial break, I, I think most Americans can sit there and go, great, you know, great for the stock market, not helping me out at the grocery store. Uh, panel, I'm going to ask you to stick around. Coming up next, uh, we want to talk about uh, Democrats and their big push now to end a federal ban when it comes to criminalizing those who want to legalize cannabis. Uh, who's leading the charge on that? And what are the chances of it actually happening? We're going to talk more about that issue. Also, Major League Baseball, remember it moved from Georgia to Colorado? Yeah, I don't know if that worked in Major League Baseball's favor, but we're going to ask our panel to weigh in on that. We'll give them the very latest Nielsen numbers. Plus, uh, what will the president say to Angela Merkel, the chancellor of Germany, next? 